Hello and welcome to Watching Movies Late at Night, where tonight we're going to be looking at Night of the Living Dead. It's remake. George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. No, no, that one's actually good, okay? Fuck you! I'm talking about the other remake. What did I say? I, I said the other remake! I'm talking about the other remake where- HOLY FUCKING SHIT! Oh, well, okay then. So, this is Night of the Living Dead in 3D, but it's being presented in 2D because, well, I never was a fan of that whole red and blue filtering bullshit, and I'm glad that it's no longer a trend anymore. So yes, this remake starts off with a similar opening to the original, except now it's being presented in really cheap camcorder HD quality and bad writing. And if I wanted that, I'd just watch my own show. But nonetheless, we meet the familiar Barbara and Johnny, who are driving to a funeral and happen to be late. In fact, late enough that they even miss the reception. Where is everybody? Maybe we missed the whole thing. Damn you, Daylight Savings Time! Damn you! And Johnny, being the tightest of assholes around, decided that even waiting a minute for the possibility of somebody coming by was just too much, and then leaves. Johnny, we get it! You're working on a reanimating serum, but please, show some respect for the dead. But things quickly pick up as Johnny gets assaulted by the funeral directors. <sighs> Who knew funeral directors were such assholes? Now, instead of dying the noble death of having his skull caved in by stone, Johnny instead leaves his sister to fend for herself amongst the zombies. <coughs> okay, fine. It was a bit harsh to call her a zombie if she's only 53, but I wouldn't have to call her that if she didn't have to smoke so much fucking cigarettes as a teenager. Well, let's get serious here. Barbara is the survivalist type, and that's why she takes the time to trip, fall, take a knife out, and cut her skirt in a totally discreet angle for the audience to see. Yes, in the original, Barbara was a bit of a damsel in distress, and while Tom Zavini's 1990 remake might have rectified her into a full-fledged badass, I cannot recall a single moment where we had to gratuitously watch Barbara show off her skirt to cut it off, unlike in here. So. Yeah. Night of the Living Dead was always about pushing boundaries. Eventually, Barbara encounters Sid Haig, just dealing with the average horror movie fan. Mr. Haig, please autograph my copy of Devil's Rejects, please! And later that night, Barbara then decides to call Johnny. Johnny, you fuck, you fucking left me, you bastard. Just pick up the phone! <laughs> yeah, John, you fuck. Mama's. She's sick or something in there. These... What's even worse is that she didn't even listen to John. He said to keep the messages short, and here she is babbling on for around 30 minutes. This is John Stella. If you must leave a message, make it short. And quite honestly, I'm sure that Johnny's dead at this point, so I don't even know why she's calling him. <sighs> Whoa, that was awfully fast of Johnny. I wonder what he had to say in such a panic. Really? We're gonna get the iconic line from the original in the form of a shitty fucking text? I don't know what's worse for Barb, losing her phone or slamming her head against the fucking tree. Better than getting hit in the face, I guess. <coughs> Speaking of getting hit in the face, Chris fucking Redfield over here shows up punching zombies. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. That's meant to be Ben. Yeah, the smart and rational black man from the previous two versions of these films has now been reduced to a weed-dealing white guy. <sighs> Great. Ben drives up to the main house of the movie, and we finally get to see more of the original pop up. No, really. They actually show the original movie on the TV. No! 
Does that mean this movie's been on loop since earlier in the day when we saw it in this film's intro? And wait a second, why do the broadcasters think that this is an appropriate thing to air while such an apocalypse is actually fucking going on? Stay in here and enjoy your movie. Lord knows she's gonna enjoy that one more than this one. Ben and Barbara then discuss the zombie situation with Henry, the owner of the house. I guess he's supposed to be like Harry from the original movie. The most meaningful change from the original yet. Although the whole butting heads aspect between Ben and Harry from the original doesn't carry over here too well because of the shitty writing. Now, we've got more pressing issues on the matter here, such as the question as to whether or not they should call the police despite the fact that they have a weed farm. Why can't we just call the cops? Is it because of the weed? I don't care. I do not care. Where are the fucking zombies? <laughs> for it, so... Zombies finally get into the house, and in Ben's case, he's lucky. The zombie that's attacking him barely bothers to even try and bite him for the most part. It's like they're doing the waltz. After that, the film dedicates way too much of its already short runtime to these assholes in the barn fucking. I mean seriously, this part lasts a good 10 or 20 minutes and all it consists of is just explicit nudity and the other characters just watching the entire event. Well, there was nudity in the original, so I guess you can't say it's uncalled for. This just goes to show that there's more work for me to be doing. To edit it out. But thankfully the zombies do interrupt this. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm not wrong in saying that she did get end up eaten out that night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why, why aren't you laughing? Why aren't you laughing? Disturbed by the obvious fan service dying, Henry finally whips out the guns. But even if this is the zombie apocalypse, don't let him see the combination to the safe. Just give me one. You know how to use it? Are you joking? I grew up on video games. That's right. He poured many hours into Duck Hunt, and now he's a master marksman. Henry then realizes his daughter is missing and tries to look for her, and this becomes a point of contention between him and Ben. Remember how in the original the argument was actually detrimental to everybody's survival, and it actually played into the bleak ending of the film? Yeah, well, here, uh, it basically just goes like this. Oh man, don't go outside. I want to go outside. No. Okay. I guess not. Gee, thanks guys. I'm really glad that this film got made. And ultimately, that argument was pointless, as his daughter was inside the house anyways. <laughs> this could have been easily averted if he just had found the Zombrex in time. You know what? I gotta stop being harsh on this movie, okay? The effects actually make up for everything. Then, in the last 30 minutes, the only recognizable actor finally shows up again. It's Sid Haig. Sid Haig, the guy on the posters and everything, shows up in the last 30 minutes of the film? This movie is short anyways, but really? And his role in the movie is giving the explanation to why all the zombies came up in the first place. Since, you know, if the original trilogy of films made it a point to not bother with giving a reason as to why the zombies came about in the first place, you gotta do it yourself. After all, only five fucking people are going to be watching this movie, including the viewers of this video. And I gotta say, why did Sid Haig agree to do this shit? He was in The Devil's Rejects not long prior to this. Did he just think that this would be a good time waster and easy paycheck? Probably. So, the reason why zombies started popping up was because Sid Haig didn't want to burn them for cremation or something? 
I don't fucking know. I fell asleep by this point, but only to be awakened by the stoner zombie. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, that was as uneventful as everything else in this movie. Sid Haig then suggests for the group to go back to his house for whatever reason, and in the smartest decision anyone's made in this entire film, Henry decides to off himself and his girlfriend. <laughs> Which, believe me, if I was in this movie, I would too. But with better fucking sound effects. It's the last 20 minutes of this fucking movie, and barely anything of note has happened. So the writers realize the best idea at this point is to just have the characters pointlessly bicker at one another. Well, thank you for a wonderful evening. Oh my god! <gasps> I know, right? This whole fucking movie's terrible! And in a twist of fate, look who shows up. It's Barbara's mom and Johnny. Now, in the original, it was actually sort of shocking to see what happened to Johnny, mainly because of Barbara's horrified expression at the realization that her brother didn't make it. However, in this movie... Um, yeah, it's, it's just more like whatever. It's, who gives a shit? Got one bullet left. Clearly, Ben didn't play enough Resident Evil to realize the importance of ammo conservation. Because then he would have known to find the map to Harry's house, and then he could have gotten ammo from the safe room. Wow, Ben, what a gamer you are. Eventually, they do reach a car where the film pulls a twist on us. Safely surrounded by guys with guns. It just has to be this way. Shitty writing. I know. Sorry, Barb. Barbara then runs to the nearest house she finds, but unfortunately, it's Sid Haig's house. He then describes his evil plan to do something, I guess. I knew. What? That this was meant to be. Sid Haig, the guy who's on the posters and everything, is also the fucking villain! And he's going through a Norman Bates complex! You are fucking psycho! You don't understand. <sighs> Great. Barb then remembers that fire is apparently Sid Haig's weakness, and so she lights his dad on fire. No, Barbara! Barbara! Well, that's the only way to prevent Crimson Heads, so... <laughs> And holy fucking shit, is it actually fucking hilarious. It gets even better because after like a quick cut of Barbara, his dad is completely absorbed by fire. What the fuck? Okay, at the rate that we saw the fire going, it would have taken like 5 billion goddamn years for the fire to completely consume his dad. Uh, <laughs> Wow, what the f- it doesn't matter anyways because Sid Haig just does nothing, it just stares at him. And for Barb, it doesn't end well, as she gets knocked down and wakes up in Sid Haig's mortuary. It's here that he tries to put her in a room full of zombies, but then he ultimately gets killed by them instead. No, 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 no. And you know what? His death would have been better if it was in slow motion and it had Freebird playing. If I Barbara and Ben then escape, but oh no, Ben had a tire iron in his body the whole time and was a zombie. Totally a better way for the character to die rather than from an ironic situation or a tragedy. Yeah, just put a fucking tire iron on him instead. Fuck it. Wow, Barb is a really great shot. I bet she must have played a lot of video games too. After that, the film turns into a Photoshop filter, and the credits roll. And that was Night of the Living Dead in 3D. Boring, unfunny, and uninteresting, this reimagining and homage doesn't really do anything worthwhile with its source material. The original had a message, and whether it be intentional or not, the focus at least was on character interaction in a dire situation. 
Whereas here it just, uh, it just sort of happens. And also, like many movies in 3D, I really fail to see the ultimate point for them being in 3D. Most of the effects in this film are all fucking garbage, so why would I want to see them in three fucking dimensions? So, this film fails on so many levels. Its story is shit, its visuals are shit, and even the music too is shit. So yeah, I just find this movie to be ultimately very fucking pointless. If you want to see a more modernized take on Night of the Living Dead, then check out the 1990 remake by Tom Savini. And you can always watch the original classic, mainly because it's in public domain, so it's pretty much available everywhere. Anyways. We've been watching movies late at night and hope to see you guys at dawn. Now, excuse me, for I think, yeah, no, I am. I'm late for a funeral. <laughs>